Welcome to the Progress Kendo UI Builder 2.0 demo series. I'm Shelley Chase, your host and software fellow at Progress. In this series, we will demonstrate how to use the basic capabilities of Kendo UI Builder. This includes creating a data object service, building editable grids, using custom templates, working with foreign keys, parent-child views, and working with charts. Each video is about 10 minutes long and can be watched individually or as a series. Let's get started. In this session, you will see how to use data from a progress data object service in the data grid predefined template. We will create a new view in Kendo UI Builder and bind this view to the salesperson data source. In the tutorial creating a data object service, we already created the data provider shown here, demo DP. We are going to use that data provider while we create the editable grid. To create an editable grid, the first thing we need to do is add a module. Let's click on the Add Module button. We can give our module a name, like Module 1. We can also pick an icon that will show when we display the landing page for this module. I'm going to pick an icon of data and give it a green background. We can also add a description, such as this is module one. Let's add our module. To add a view, we now need to edit the module. Let's click the edit button, and we will click the add view to be able to add our editable grid to this module. So we are going to do, give the grid a, give the view a name, grid, and we are going to select the data grid predefined template, and let's add that view. What we see here is a generic grid because it doesn't know what data source we are going to use. So by default, it picked a, our data provider because we only had one. For our data source, we have several resources, so we want to pick the resource that we would like. Let's pick our sales rep resource. We also have options on what the edit mode is. We can do a read-only mode, which keeps the data ed not editable, or we can do th one of three edit modes, in-cell, in-line, and pop-up, and we will look at each of those in this tutorial. The main piece of information that's important is looking at grid columns. So we have to decide what grid columns we want people to be able to edit in this view. One thing we don't want people to edit is the calculated field year quota, because that's coming um, as a total of all of the monthly quotas. So let's move that to our excluded columns, and let's click Save. Let's change our page size to 10. And let's save and generate. Previewing that app. We can see we have our module. And it gives us our grid, but we had left it in the edit mode of read only, so nothing is editable at this moment. Let's go back and pick our first editable type. Um, I do want to set a title. And now let's pick the editable mode of in cell. Let's once again save and generate and preview. This time we can see that we have some additional buttons. We have a new button, we have a save changes, we have a cancel changes. And we also have a delete button over here to delete the row. So if I click on that delete button, you get a confirmation which says, do you really want to delete this record? Um, I do not. You also get the ability to create a new record which will give you an editable row with any defaults that were defined 
for adding a salesperson to this table. We're going to look at editing. So if I click on the first row, you will see I'm in the column that I clicked on becomes editable. So I could now change this to BBA. And if you can see, there's a little red triangle here, which shows that that piece of information has changed. If we pick another piece of data that we want to change and make his area now central, you can see that there's two triangles, which shows us the piece of data. That can also happen down here on another row. So as long as we're working in the same page of data, we can batch that all together as a single update in this mode. So let's change this region to east. And now you'll again see a little triangle there. So if we say save changes, this will all be saved. If we say cancel changes, then all of these changes that we make will not be sent to the server. Let's click save changes. Now because that came back and those changes are reflected here, that means it all succeeded. If there was an error on any of those rows, the error message would have come back and none of the changes would have been committed. Let's go back to the Kendo UI Builder and look at the next edit mode, which is called Inline. And now let's preview. So here we can see we only have a new button up top and we have an edit and a delete button on each individual row. So if I want to add a new row, I click the new button just like I did before. But if you notice, all of the fields are editable. And at that point, I can either um, update, save the new row, or cancel. We're just going to cancel out of that. Now, if I want to edit a row, so let's go back and edit the first row that we changed. Let's put our uh, initials back to BBB. And now we can uh, must update or cancel this row before we can move to another. So if I try to click on another row, it will not let me move there until I do something with the current row. So I'm going to say update, and that update succeeded. So as you can see, this is done on an as row basis, so a single row at a time, and all of the fields are made editable at the same time. Our last edit mode is pop-up. Now pop-up will, as you expect, bring a pop-up with all of the fields for editing. So here if we do a new, we will get a pop-up which shows us all the fields that are available um, to enter information for. If we do an edit, we again can see all of the fields and as we click in them, they can be edited. So here I can say East and this is modal so you can only update this one record at a time. There are many other customizations you can do in the edit grid. You can pick which edit options you want to allow. For example, you might not want to allow a, a record to be deleted. You can also change the labels that are on the toolbar buttons. So cancel changes and save changes was what we had available when we did the in-cell mode. Um, that's pretty verbose. I normally take off the changes part. And again, when you have row buttons, um, I like to just go to the icons. So you can see the icons. And the other thing you can do is set um, filtering, sorting, grouping, and resizing of columns. So we can say we want to allow sorting and filtering. And we can also define a row select event. So as a row is selected, you can do some pre-processing to make sure that if you had a calculated field that that is properly filled in. That's all there is to creating an editable grid in the Kendo UI Builder. For more Kendo UI Builder tutorials, please visit the Kendo UI Builder webpage. Thank you for viewing. Here are additional Kendo UI Builder 2.0 resources for you to explore.